This episode of the Slipcast is brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium, small batch, roast to order, veteran owned coffee company located in Perrysburg, Ohio. Uh, they are fair trade certified, USD organic, and integrity is their core value to do the right thing even when, when no one is looking. Their coffee beans are high quality directly from far-off lands such as in Indonesia, Peru, Brazil, Uganda, and much, much more. Coffee, all coffees are available, or well, some, excuse me, <laughs> some coffees available in K-Cup, gift cards available for the holiday season, and of course, free shipping over $50. Be sure to hit them up at ironbeancoffee.com to place your order or find out more information about them. And that is Iron Bean Coffee Company, who are America's local coffee roaster. What's up, YouTube? What's up, Sloopcats? How's everyone doing today? Kyle, we got, man, seasons, I mean, the season's not over. Season feels like it's over, but, uh, man, it's we're just getting into the silly season here. We got National Signing Day coming up. Don't don't you guys go quitting on us. We're still here. We're still pumping out the good stuff. Of course, we're always here. We're here all year round. It's not just a fall thing. It's not just a fall and spring thing. Oh, and we all are changing we are changing things up come January. You uh if you're a fan of us, you'll be a fan of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh more content than you know what to do with. But yeah, uh, stick around till January to find out what the hell I'm talking about. Make sure if you're if you're watching this on the Buckeye Scoop channel that you're also following us over on our private, you or not our private, our uh, exclusive. What's um, individual YouTube channel? I don't know. It's 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 called Sloopcast. Make sure you're following us over there. All right, Kyle, you ready to start this thing? Let's do it. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right. How are you doing today, Jared? You know, um, it's there's there's a lot happening. There's a lot happening. Um, some of it good, some of it bad. Some of it we've already covered. Uh, you know, we're we're officially in like that season uh, where there's there's a lot happening. There's a lot happening. Uh, a lot happening on the recruiting front. We talked on our last episode about coaching changes, uh, defensive coordinator coming in. We don't necessarily know who's going out at this point. Um, and just rumors, just rumors flying around everywhere. Uh, it's it's that season. We're in that season, Kyle. Yeah. A lot, yep, a lot of news coming up. And then, of course, we're going to be breaking down our preview of the early signing day, which is this Wednesday. So we'll also be recording our next episode for for Thursday's episode. We'll be covering all of the early signing day news as well. But let's go ahead and get right into the news here. And speaking of the early recruiting here, um, Tegra, Tegra, one of the one of the best um, recruits that Ohio State has currently verbally committed. Yep, has said that he will not enroll early. And <laughs> I, I think I think the way he worded it on social media gave yeah. gave many many Buckeye fans a little bit of a little bit of a heart attack. There, uh, <laughs> he he says here, I Tegra will not be attending the Ohio State University early, and will finish <laughs> up my reigning semester at Lakota West. You know, for, first and foremost, I'm happy for him. Like if like do that if if you want to if you I hate that it's almost expected at this point that these that these kids give up the last part of their senior year and now you have kids enrolling early and yada 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 and like I get it I do I really really get it but you know I'm I'm happy that he's making that decision for himself that's and I don't know that that's the end of that that that's the mm -hmm. end of that thought yep uh Tyreek Smith. Tyreek Smith heading to the Senior Bowl, and I believe that's number two or three for Ohio State in the Senior Bowl. Yeah, and, and we should uh, consider that, like, you know, that's that's the official announcement. Tyreek Smith moving on to the NFL. Um, 
I don't necessarily think that was a question in a lot of people's minds. But with, you know, 2020 not counting and everything else, like, it seems like there's a lot of things in question as far as players coming back, not coming back, and a lot of a lot more uncertainty in that area than there there was in years past. Again, just because of just because of all of it, right? Just because of all of it. Uh, so yeah, it's there. There's our official notice. Tyreek Smith on his way out. Uh, Ohio State not not hurting for young tight ends. I would say. Excuse me, defensive ends. So it's uh, it is what it is. We move forward. Uh, I think Tyreek Smith underappreciated by a lot of Ohio State fans. I think he's a lot. I think both both he and both he and Harrison. I think didn't have the best defenses to play in, and I feel I feel like their skills are underappreciated in many ways by high, by Ohio State fans. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he'll be. I think he'll get. A, I think whoever picks him up in this year's draft, we'll get a solid defensive end to put on the roster. He'll have a solid career. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, Moving on to the transfer portal here, the transfer portal portal, give us and the transfer portal take us away. And, and that goes without saying that with Ryan Watts. Yeah. Entering the transfer portal. After just two seasons at Ohio State, a little, little confused here. Well, not confused. I was just a little surprised to see Ryan Watts. Yeah. Um, put his name in name in the transfer portal. I think he had a, a decent shot at getting a lot of playable time. But I mean, we we've seen a lot of the younger folks really. Right. Um, yeah. Take get snaps. Are you, did you freeze up on me there? Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, uh, a lot of the, we've seen more snaps being distributed to like his classmates, Cavazos, uh, as an example, um, Cam Martinez, as an example, two, two people who he came into the, into the class with, uh, currently getting more snaps than him. Um, you, we obviously see Denzel Burke, uh, who I think got more snaps at cornerback than anyone this year. Uh, and then, you know, we, again, sort of talking about with Tyreek Smith, how 2020 has really thrown a lot of, it's, it's hard to say who's coming and who's going because like both Cam Brown and seven banks in theory could come back. Um, I don't know who will come back. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I don't necessarily know who can improve and who Ohio state would actually want in and all of that. Right. Like it's all, it's all, it's all up in the air as far as the corners go um, and maybe Ryan Watts knows something we don't know as far as how he feel like he's stacking up against the, the younger guys on the team. Uh, you know, we didn't necessarily see a ton of snaps going to Jordan Hancock and uh, Jacqueline Johnson, but you know, maybe he feels like he knows where he is stacking up against them, or maybe it's just frustration or or whatever the situation is. I think Ohio state does have a lot of uh, young corner talent. And I, I don't think that this, this class coming in, which we're going to talk about here in a few minutes uh, is, is, is too short on cornerback talent either. So I don't know. Maybe Ryan Watts just feels like it's, it's time to move on. Um, but yeah, you'd like to see a guy maybe give himself more than two years to figure it out. But that's yeah. that that's the situation we're in right now. Yeah, I, th- I think to me, that, I think that was the biggest thing. You you got redshirted your first year, okay, mm-hmm. and then didn't get as much play time as you were hoping to in the second year. There, yeah, I I I kind of hoped that he would give it another year to see how things go. But completely, I understand wishing. Wish him the best of luck to wherever he decides to go here. Yeah. All right, Jared. Um, so let's let's get right into it with the with the early signing date, uh, our preview or our December mock draft, as as um we put together here. So let's mock class. I I do it all the time. <laughs> I do it all the time. Yes. Don't worry about it. yeah. The mock class. Yeah. Mock, mock class. class. So let's. Let's go ahead and start it off with all the current verbal commits, Jared. And they are defensive backs, T- 
Terrence Brooks, uh, Jair Brown, Ryan Turner, and I guess you could put in um, Kai Stokes in there as well, too. Uh, linebackers, C.J. Higgs, Gabe, Bauer, Gabe Powers. Uh, offensive tackles, uh, Tegra, uh, Chibola. Yep. Chibola. <laughs> George, and George uh, Fitzpatrick, running back. A- uh, Avery Henry. Don't forget about Avery Henry. At oh, offensive tackle. Yep, Avery Henry, thank you. Uh, running back, uh, Dalen, Dallin Hayden. Tight end Bennett Christian and wide receivers. Oh boy, a lot of wide receivers. Uh, Caleb Burton, Caleb Brown, uh, Koja Antwi, uh, Kyan Grays, and Kenyatta Jackson. Kenyatta Jackson at defensive end. Uh, yeah, yes. it's it's uh, it's a really nice class so far. I, I think in many ways, it's people are maybe feeling like it's a disappointing class only because there was a point in time. And that point in time really wasn't even that long ago where we felt like this was going to be like the best recruiting class ever. Right. It seems like we say that every year. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. But this, this one early on really, really felt like it, like this really, really felt like a historic recruiting class in the making. Um, Quinn Ewers reclassified. So that, Obviously, you have the number one player in the country in the recruiting class, and then you don't. <laughs> mm-hmm. So that that obviously hurt the the twenty twenty two class here. Uh, that then they lost a top ten overall cornerback, and like that, you know, Florida kid's gonna Florida kid. That's and that's all I'm gonna say about that. Um, you get an early recruitment from a from a Florida defensive back. You you take that recruitment and you hold your breath the entire time, and then this time it didn't work out. Um, yep. Then you have a situation where Ohio State was absolutely 100% getting Zion Branch, uh, who's one of the best safeties in this class. Uh, Zion and his brother, Zach, who's in the 2023 class, they, they were in. Like, I know they never officially publicly committed, but when I tell you that they were in, they were in. All right, they were, they were in this class. Um, but I think both of them, like, wanted to go to USC, but just saw USC for what it was and, you know, weren't going to put their future in the hands of USC. Mm -hmm. And then the situation at USC changed and, you know, they got enough hope from the current coaching staff that is now being put in place at USC that there was enough hope and enough whatever uh, to give them the confidence to go there. So that's, they did what they wanted to do, but didn't feel like they could do, which was go to USC. So that hurt. Um, Xavier and Wonkba surprises a lot of people has committed to Iowa. Uh, you know, maybe Iowa looked just good enough this year to convince him to, to stay home, be a hometown hero and, and do that thing. Do, you know, become that guy for Iowa who is, you know, he's one of the best, especially from a skill position standpoint, one of the best players to commit to Iowa in a very, very, very long time. And, you know, what what happens if Iowa, a team that's always done a lot with comparatively little in a rec- from a recruiting standpoint, all of a sudden, what happens if Iowa can start getting guys like Nwankpa, who is, a, you know, a top 50-ish player in the country, a high four-star player? What happens when you can start getting those guys at Iowa. Does that change things? Or is this just a one-off case of the hometown kids staying at home? Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely here. And yeah, all all the reasons that you said too, like this would have been a historic class just, but coaching changes and other, other aspects that just beyond Ohio state's control that, that just changed the whole recruiting aspect here, but by, it's by the way, so, Kyle, still a still a solid solid class. Still, I mean, cur- currently right now, eighteen verbal commits for Ohio State, averaging ninety four point one, which, if I'm looking, is the second highest average recruit. Nineteen. No, no, I'm sorry, you're right. Eighteen. My bad. So, still yeah. a very solid class, and. Uh, it is still a significant um, separation from Ohio State, who's currently in the fourth um, 
currently fourth in the rankings right now recruiting, but I don't know who, who, who do we think that could sign on for Ohio state here? So we got 18 here. Maybe we can get about four ish, four or five ish um, recruits coming in here. So who, who do we have on our, on our mock uh, class about said draft again, or mock yeah. class. Uh, real, real quick, did you mention, because I, I realized the formatting I put in the notes might have been slightly oh, yeah, confusing. Yeah, also, yeah. Did you? Thank you. Yeah, th- this is I my did, fault. I, I did not. I did not. Yep, apologize. So also, uh, Devin Brown and um, and um, Styles as well. Yeah. yeah. Both committed too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, so, uh, Sonny Styles was already committed, uh, but reclassifies, obviously. 2023 kid reclassifies the 2022 uh, Pickerington Central kid um, was in many ways, in many thoughts, uh, a big win for Ohio State, despite the fact that he's a Central Ohio kid, because like his brother plays for Notre Dame and Notre Dame is going to be in on a lot of Ohio kids uh, from from now to the near future. Right. So it, it, it is. Yeah, because I, I was looking real briefly at the uh, state rankings here. So I was looking at Ohio. I'm like, okay, let's see how Ohio State's doing. One and two with CJ and Sony. Okay. But then sure. number three and four, Penn State. And then five and six, Ohio State. And then seven, Notre Dame. Eight, Ohio State. Nine, Clemson. And then 10, Indiana. Yeah, and that, and that, no, that number seven to Notre Dame really hurts with Emil Wagner. That's a guy that we had in oh. many early iterations of this recruiting class. And by yeah, Blake, absolutely. Blake Miller going to Clemson also hurt because like Ohio state, um, I think missed in many ways, it, you know, as, as we take a look at this recruiting class, obviously like a lot of things went wrong. We talked about a quarterback who, who reclassifies and a cornerback who decommitted and a pair of safeties who like we had in the class for a very long time and then aren't anymore. Uh, yeah. But if, if you look at this class, what really hurts, if you look at earlier iterations of this recruiting mock uh, mock class, I almost said mock draft. I, I almost did it that time. Mock class. What you will really see as far as missed opportunities are along the offensive line. Yeah, no, um, absolutely. And, th- and that seems to be a hit or miss thing throughout the past decade here. There's always been, a, I don't, I don't think Ohio State has always had a solid, they, they've always had good um, classes with offensive tackles, but never like an, an elite recruiting class with offensive tackles. We always seem to have good ones here and there, and they seem to develop really well. Yeah. But never, but always seem to be missing these offensive linemen, especially ones in state that just Ohio State cannot keep in state. Yeah. And whenever they've had, whenever they've missed on big players in the state, they've been offensive linemen. Um, that's, that, I mean, that, that is what it is. That's, that's the facts. Like it really is. Um, when, but you one, know, th- one thing I like about this offense, I just, this, just real um, quick, Kyle, like, Kenyatta Goodwin was a guy that I feel like Ohio State could have, should have had in this class. Ryan Bear, uh, an Ohio kid who goes to Clemson, someone Ohio State should have had in this class. Cam Dewberry, a guy that Ohio State was in on the conversation with Cam Dewberry for a real long time, kid out of Texas, uh, does not work out in this class. Um, doesn't even make the top three in the end, which is shocking. Um, Emil Wagner, we already talked about, um, a lot of missed opportunities. I think Addison Nichols was a guy who I, who a lot of people were really, really confident about, uh, Tyler Brooker may have all always been, um, a bit of a more, more of a want, more of a, maybe, may have been a bit of a pipe dream all along, but definitely someone we were keeping our eye on. And once again, I, where, if you look at. Ohio State's class, the the disappointments in large part have come across the offensive line, which again, mm-hmm. as Kyle pointed out, feels like a recurring theme. Yeah, no, absolutely. Here, that's I'm I'm, I'm really happy to see how well they've recruited from the linebackers because it just that's probably the biggest miss Ohio State's had in the past decade overall has been the linebackers. Yeah, and you got 
and you got the two top linebackers in your in your not just in the state but in the country too. Number two overall for C.J. Hicks, number six overall in Gabe Powers. Yeah, great, great pickups there. So, well, uh, but I, I do want to point out, Kyle, that it is a possibility. Gabe Powers might be a defensive end. I'm just tossing that out there. Gabe Powers might be a defensive end, but also along those same lines, Sonny Styles might be a linebacker. Yes. So, you know, you know what I mean? Like Sonny Styles is either going to be an undersized linebacker or a really, I mean, he's 6'4", 215, and he is right now a high school junior. Yeah, might be a little big to play safety. Might be a little big to play safety. So maybe he comes down and, and plays linebacker. Gabe Powers, 6'4", 230. Might be a bit big to be playing linebacker. Might move down to the defensive end. So, I, you know, we have some question marks as far as where everyone's fitting exactly. Um, but, yeah, it's... It, it is... It's... Point is collect talent, right? Especially when they're in state, collect the talent and then figure out how the pu puzzle pieces fit together later. But, you know, CJ Hicks, that that's a dude right there. Like, we want to talk about a linebacker. You want to talk about getting one of the best linebackers who's in the country, who also, by the way, happens to be in Ohio. You get your dude. That's your dude right there. Yep, absolutely. All right, Jared. So we have 18 right now. What are what are four or five names do you think that Ohio State will could get here for this for this class. And we will reveal those last four names after this ad break. Ah, I'm a professional. Did you did you did you hear me do that, Kyle? I am a professional. <laughs> All right. Uh the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company kind of did the thing, right? Marine, veteran owned, fair trade certified, all those things, right? So uh we take a look at we take a look at some of the coffees. Um I'm Let's let's talk about some medium roast coffees. Uh, we can talk about the cast iron and the ride or die. Those are two of my absolute favorite coffees. Um, originally, ro uh, this is the cast iron uh, was originally roasted by hand in a cast iron skillet, just like all of their coffees were at that time. That is where this one gets its name. Uh, it is a medium roast coffee with 100% single origin Honduran Arabica beans, like all of their beans, USD, USDA certified and fair trade uh, certified. Uh, it is a coffee that is smooth, rich, uh, has a full body, low acidity. Uh, main tone is going to be a deep semi-sweet chocolate uh, smoke note balanced with just a hint of a floral Um it is sweet balanced coffee with a nice spice note and a slight black pepper and caramel in the uh, the roast that turned out a little bit lighter. Uh, that's that's the cast iron. Let's take a look at the ride or die. The ride or die um, is a gentle yet distinctive version of the classic American breakfast cup. Superb when drip brewed and enjoyed black. Um, roasted and turned with cocoa nibs. Cocoa nibs don't make it into the bag, but that they are roasted with the cocoa nibs. Um, it is a Brazilian yellow bourbon coffee bean with superb smoothness and flavor. You'll find notes of caramel, hazelnut, and sweet cream. Um, yeah, that's those are two of my absolute favorite coffees over at ironbeancoffee.com. You can find your favorite coffee, your new favorite coffee, over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. All right, Kyle. Uh, we have, I, I have, I've singled out four names. You said four or five. I'm stopping at four. Uh, that that's where I'm I'm stopping this, which is not the biggest class. Um, that would put Ohio State at 22, which is a pretty small class. Uh, so maybe maybe there's some surprises coming. But as far as early signing period goes, I feel like this is it. And I think Ohio State might look to the transfer portal maybe for a couple extra spots. And I, and I have at least one name there for you. Um, but let's let's start off on the defensive uh, defensive side. Uh, actually, three of these four names will all be defensive players. Number one on this list is Omari Abor. Um, was at one time, uh, was at one time a five-star player. I believe he 
is quote unquote down to a four star. But point is, is that he's a four slash five star. He's a very, he's either very, he's a very, very high four star. You know, let's not, let's not get too worried about too, hun too many hundredths of a point here. Right. Uh, an incredibly talented, talented defensive end out of the state of Texas. He's a pass rusher. Um, it was sort of going back and forth between Ohio State and Oklahoma and uh, you know Bama was in there and a couple other schools are in there, but I think Ohio State's going to win out here. Uh, you know, Lincoln Riley going to USC hurt Ohio State in some ways, but, you know, sort of helped push Abor towards Ohio State in this case. So uh, that, that'll be name number one that I fully expect to end up in Ohio State's final class. Um, I... I'm also expecting th th all of these individuals to sign on early signing period uh, during the early signing period. Um, both all of the names who we've already mentioned who are signing uh, that are already in the class. I know that, you know, maybe Tegra isn't early enrolling, but he will still be signing on early signing day. Um, as will Amari Abor, as will Hero Canoe. Uh, Hero Canoe was another guy who we were concerned about in the wake of of Lincoln Riley going to USC uh he is a California kid uh out of out of uh Santa Margetta I, I don't know uh Catholic school in California uh, I I was doing real good pronouncing all the names until right then then I blew it blew it uh just outside the top 100 overall players uh, a defensive tackle, by, by all means, giving Ohio State some needed depth in the defensive tackle room. Uh, really a position of need for Ohio State right now. Uh, an incredibly talented player, like I said, just, just outside uh, the top 100 overall players. Uh, Ohio State, I think there's a bunch of defensive tackles who could have made it into this class. Um, you, you know, Chris McKellen, I think, is a guy who's not going to make the final class. I think he's going elsewhere. Dominic James, a guy who I don't think makes the class, will end up elsewhere. Uh, but I think if Ohio State can finish off their defensive tackle class with uh, Hero Canoe and then Caden Curry. Uh, Caden Curry, who, by the way, might be a defensive end. Here's another one of these tweeners, Kyle. Mm -hmm. Another one of these guys who might might end up in one of two places, right? Uh he might be a defensive end. He might be a defensive tackle uh, at 6'3", 250 out of Greenwood, Indiana. Um, Caden Curry, uh, just uh, either just inside or just outside the top 100, depending upon who you're looking at. Um, one of the top players in the state of Indiana. Uh, a real weird situation with Caden Curry because he's a guy who I've had like in Ohio State's class. Like 100%, almost 100%, 90% in Ohio State's class all year. Like it feels like for a solid 12 months, I've basically been counting Caden Curry in the class and I've never wavered on that. I felt that way the entire time. It's just like, and I, and I respect it. I respect it just being like, I'm not actually going to commit. <laughs> you know, well, I mean, I mean, more, more confidence too. I mean, Bill Kirk and Steve Wiltfong put their yeah. crystal balls in just recently too. Was it just recently? State. Yeah, we had um yeah Bill Kirk um this Sunday actually put his in. Okay. And and then Steve um put his in about three days ago. There you go. But like I said, for for what it's worth, I've had him in the class for near twelve months or maybe twelve months. Like it's, I I and I've just never yeah. even been I've never even been like even s semi doubtful of that. It's just. It's just weird because you've had him like right there the entire time. Yeah, All right. Absolutely. The the last player I am adding to this class is uh Carson Hinsman. This is a this is a unique situation. One, because uh he will be at least by the way the positions are currently labeled, and we've already discussed how, you know, maybe this guy gets moved here, maybe this guy gets moved there, but based off of current positions will be the lone interior offensive lineman in this class. Now, and maybe after the early signing period, Ohio State goes and they find someone else, um, but I just don't have a name I'm confident enough to, to put forth there. Um, I really feel like losing Ernest Green, losing out on Ernest Green was uh, a huge loss for Ohio State. 
Um, there, there were some other interior offensive linemen who they were kind of in on, but never really felt necessarily great about. Uh, but it, with uh, if they pick up Carson uh, Hinsman, I think it'll be a huge pickup for them. Uh, this is a guy who is, again, just outside the top 100, depending upon which recruiting service you're looking at. And what makes this extra weird, Kyle, despite, you know, on top of all the other weird things I've mentioned, what makes this yep. extra weird is that he's from Wisconsin. How often do you go into Wisconsin and steal an offensive lineman? You have a pretty highly ranked offensive lineman out of the state of Wisconsin and Ohio State looking like the favorite to get him. That's that's a weird because. As far as like building a wall around the state of Wisconsin, you'd you'd figure an offensive lineman be the last person to slip out, and yeah. it, it's yeah. not because Wisconsin doesn't want him because they do. This is a, this is a two man race uh, of the four names I've added to this list of the four names I've added to the class. He's the one I'm least sure about. I'll say that because Wisconsin still absolutely has a fighting chance here. If he ends up going to Wisconsin, I won't be shocked but I am giving Ohio state the edge right now. Yeah, absolutely. All right, cool. Um, so yeah, that's, that's 22 players. That's 22 players in our December mock. And of course, tune back again with us on Thursday as we go over the early recruiting period and talk about the wins and losses for any of the hot topics that come up here. So bonus bonus here, Jared. Yep. It, Talked about talked about the transfer portal at the top of the show. Yep. The the giveth and the taketh here. Uh, strong strong consideration for Ohio State to get a a transfer coming in, coming in here and by the name of Austin uh, Stogner, a kid out of Oklahoma, who's yep. looking like going to be coming to Columbus here. Potentially, maybe. Potentially. Yeah. Uh, he he. Ohio State appears to be the favorite landing spot for Stogner right now, or maybe it's Stogner. Kyle might be right. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, highly ranked tight end. Ohio State obviously going to, um, you know, lose who what was one, you know, one of their best defensive ends of all time. We'll, we'll be exiting the class or exiting the team rather uh, here in a, in a couple weeks. So going out. Getting another Oklahoma kid, which, you know, if, if, he, if he turns out nearly as good as the last Oklahoma kid that Ohio State stole from the portal, uh, then that, that'll be a pretty good sign, right? Uh, mm-hmm. But, yeah, Ohio State, uh, this is the lone person who I'm willing, if we're, if we're sort of extending the mock class into the transfer portal, uh, Stogner's the, the lone guy who I feel confident enough to place in the class right now but kids are entering the transfer portal every day. So yep. don't, 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 don't think that this will be, don't think I'm saying it's only him. I'm just saying he's the only one I feel confident enough in right now. Uh, that's so that that's where I'm landing as far as that goes. So Kyle, that as Kyle pointed out there, that is a class of 22 plus one, 22 plus one. Um, and then I, those, again, I just want to state that like after things change after the early signing period. So maybe there's another name or two that Ohio State ends up adding to this class. Uh, but I just don't have enough confidence in any one given name to, to, to put them in the class at this time. There's a few names you're watching. There's a few names that might come out of nowhere. But for right now, these are the names I feel good enough to put it in, put into the class. All right, sounds good. All right, we're going to move from the gridiron to to our the sloop hoops here, Jared. The hardwood, from the gridiron to the hardwood. Absolutely, yeah. I would say with a big victory over um, over Wisconsin, seventy three to fifty five, this weekend. Uh, this was Ohio State's uh, big Big Ten opener. Opener. I can't. Maybe, maybe not. Either way, it was a big, <laughs> big, um, it was a big, big ten opponent here, just to really see how Ohio State was going to handle after after beating Duke and see see how they are able to handle it from there. And you know what? Con- it's confirming. amazing. It's amazing how well you look when you don't have that many turnovers. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I feel like Ohio State 
is starting to put it all together, right? Because despite the fact that this is a pretty old team, and it is, there's a lot of experience on this team. You do have a lot of experienced players, you know, sort of playing together for the first time. You bring in Wheeler, and Wheeler is starting to become a a, a real big contributor to this team. Um, you know, not necessarily from a points perspective. You know, he scores he scores nine points here, but you know, he also has five assists and continues to be a you know a great asset defensively. Um, and then you you mix that together with some of the returning Ohio State elder statesmen in EJ Liddell uh, and Justin Arns. And then, you know, of course, Kyle Young. Don't forget about Kyle Young. Jeez, he, he was a monster. He was a monster on the board there. 14 ro- rebounds for that game. Just absolutely yeah. just in that paint there. And that, that was just a big thing on why Ohio State was able to really outperform Wisconsin here. They they limited Wisconsin to only five offensive rebounds. So Kyle Young 40, really getting it getting it done in the paint. 49 to 28. Total rebound split 49 to 28. That's that's devastation. Um Wisconsin, like we see Wisconsin do sometimes, uh was really trying to lean on the, the three pointer. And early in the game, it really looked like it was going to work out for them. Uh, they jumped out to what I believe was maybe about a, a, I believe about a 10 point lead at one point um, early in the game. It, it was one of those situations where you feel like maybe this isn't going to be Ohio state's night when a team like Wisconsin can get hot behind the arc and that, that, that you know what I mean? Like it, it kind of felt like one of those games uh, and then they cooled down. Like they were making, shots they're making three-point shots when they were covered when they were too far behind the line uh they, they were hitting all the shots it kind of like i said it really felt like it was gonna be one of those nights and then they cooled off and they end up finishing the game at 23 percent behind the arc uh which is not a win- winning formula for wisconsin and of course when you're that dependent upon the long shots that makes it all that much harder to get those offensive rebounds uh as mm-hmm. kyle pointed out that you know only pick up five offensive rebounds the entire game and just like Ohio state completely devastated uh, Wisconsin as far as the total rebounds. Yeah. So like I said, Ohio state falls behind early comes back, builds a nice 10 point lead. And for the most part, sort of maintained that 10 ish point lead for the rest of the game. Uh, they end up, like I said, finishing the game at 73 55, but yeah, this yeah. is another great performance of Ohio State. The older players figuring out how to play together. Zed Key coming into his own, becoming like, you know, a a crucial, a, a key player. There, I said it. A crucial player with the, you know, the starters on this team. And then the young guys starting to come in, um, whether it be uh, Branham or uh, Michi, the, the young guys starting to figure out what their roles are on the team. And Kyle, I, I know I've said it before. I said it, I'll say it again. I feel really, really good about this team, the way they've sort of come together already. It's, it's, and, a, it's, ama- it's amazing um, how quality wins really rethinks you, rethinks about, about a team. Cause the first couple of games there were yeah. like, man, this is going to be a long year. This is, this is, unless they have something come up with something quick here, this is, it's going to be a team that's struggling. You know what? Nah, I they, never lost they, faith. They found they they're finding ways. They found they they found what's working best for them, and they never gotta, lost they faith. Keep, Kyle, they they got a. What I would like to see from this team is still keep improving on reducing the turnovers. They still had fourteen for the game. It's got to come down more, especially when they got Kentucky this Saturday as well. So yeah, man, the this December has been. Uh, very brutal for Ohio State, and you know what? They're they're, they're taking well. it all in stride here. They're doing real well with a with a real tough schedule. Um, the one the one thing I feel like could really help put Ohio State over the top, as far as you know, maybe being a team that ma- tries to make a real nice run, is maybe if they can get Brunk going. Um, I, I think because Ohio State hasn't had like a true center. In a, in a very, very long time. 
I think Zed Key, who you know is doing an, a real admiral admirable job, you know, but he's still he's not he's not tall enough. I mean, that's just he's not. But I think he plays tall. <laughs> you know, if if you if you if you don't know who Zed Key is, I'm just saying if you sit down and put an average person in front of like, well, that's obviously the center, right? Even though he's not really any taller uh, than EJ Liddell, he he plays like a big dude. Uh, yeah. So he's doing a great job considering, uh, especially once you get into Big Ten play, he's going to be an undersized center, but that's the role he's playing. And he's also, you know, allowing Zed Key to have that role is freeing up EJ Liddell to not play under the basket and to shoot the ball more. And that's going great. Uh, you know, EJ Liddell has absolutely improved his shooting game. Um, it's uh, he's he's having a fantastic year so far. If they could get Brunk going and have, it, you know, a, a true center available to them at times, that would be great. Uh, he, he hasn't really just he hasn't caught his, you know, he hasn't he hasn't caught on yet as far as that goes but we'll we'll see what happens maybe again as the season goes like i wasn't necessarily wheeler wasn't gelling with the team right away either right um and that's fine because he has now and that's one of the keys to ohio state playing better is that wheeler is gelling with the team now and playing with the team now uh if they could get brunk into that same situation and start to bring him along i think that would be huge for ohio state yep absolutely all right jared that is that is it that's all that is the, that is today's episode here. That's it. That's all. That's all, Jared. Oh, man, you don't have any ask Sloopcast? Um, we well, couple. we had one from Zach, but it kind of kind of went along with what we talked about earlier. He asked, uh, "Do you think the twenty two class fair in the future with so many guys returning, and then the twenty three class?" Uh, we'll we'll get into depth about the twenty three class in a future episode, maybe even in a, in a week or so, um, as we sort of start, you know, as the 23 class sort of becomes the, the current class that we're really taking a look at, I think we'll maybe end up even doing our first mock 23 class. Uh, I don't know if we'll get that done in December. That might be an early January thing. So stay tuned for that. Um, yeah, that's, I, I think, 23 class is something we're going to dive into a little bit further here in the next month or so. Uh, Kabuto Kyle does also ask the question, Jim Knowles from West Philadelphia, born and raised was the playground where he spent most of his days. I, I cannot, I cannot speak Jim Knowles childhood. Uh, I don't know. I would assume so. I would assume so. I mean, you know what? I'm just going to say yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, did no point, however, did he move to California. Just saying. At no point did, uh, in my, in my, to my knowledge, did he ever live in Bel Air. All right, Kyle. Uh, that's it. Uh, that's all we got. I want to encourage everyone. Uh, one, be sure to follow us on on YouTube. If you're watching this on the Buckeye Scoop YouTube channel, thank you. Uh, we won't be posting here any more effective January 1st. So if you want to continue watching our content, please be sure to go to uh, our YouTube channel. You can search Buckeye uh, Sloopcast and you will, or probably just Sloopcast might even get you there a little bit better. You can just search Sloopcast and you will find us. I promise if you can't uh, just go to youtube.thesloopcast.com and, and you'll, you'll get a link that way. And also there's a nice little title card car, title card at the end of this episode. And you can, uh, there'll be a link there to, to click on us. Um, outside of that, be sure to uh, hop over to our Discord server. Come hang out with us. Come chat with us. Uh, we are streaming games. Uh, we streamed both this uh, Wisconsin game and the game uh, against Duke. Uh, those are exclusive to people within our Discord. That's how we can get away with doing that, right? It's, it's not public. Um and then if you're a part of our uh, Patreon, which you can join, patreon.thesloopcast.com. But if you're a patron of the Sloopcast, uh, not not only can you watch along, but you can actually just sort of talk with us. Uh, not sort of, you can. You can talk with us during the game as well. You you have voice privileges in the server, and you can talk to us as we 
as we watch the game. So th- those are a lot of fun. We call those our social screens. Uh, you do, again, have to be part of our Discord server to participate in those. Uh, Discord.thesloopcast.com. It's just an app on your phone. If you don't know what Discord is, it's just an app on your phone. That's it. It's 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 just a group chat, group chat app. There, I said it right. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, nothing interesting, honestly. <laughs> um, don't care about the Heisman. No. Don't care about um, about false um coaching changes that's been rumored around. It's it's that time of the year. Yeah. With uh the with. With the early recruiting cycle coming around here, just don't believe anything that you hear when it comes to coaching changes at Ohio State. Unless you hear it from us, in which case, go right ahead. That, that would be my... If, if we say it, you can believe us. But as far as, like, random message board Twitter stuff, don't. Don't get too worked up about it. Guys, yeah. R- Ryan Day's not leaving. I'm just. I mean, he he he's he's still traveling. He's, he he just got a, He just got a de- his defensive coordinator for two million a year. He, he he's staying, guys and sure. girls, gals, guys and gals, are not and our our guys, our gals, and our non-binary pals. I can tell you this for sure. Ryan Day does not want to become the next coach of the Chicago Bears. It's it's yeah. fine. Now, now, you, now there could be a discussion of, well, should Urban Meyer be at Jacksonville still? Not getting into that. <laughs> nope, we're going to end the episode, Jared, Jared. So let's <laughs> go ahead and end us off here. All right. Uh, let's see. Tonight's ending music, Kyle, will be brought to you by a uh, an Ohio-based band, a Columbus-based band on top of that. Uh, they are called the floor walkers, uh, one of my favorite bands in the area. So, uh, make sure to stick around. If you're listening to the audio version of this, make sure to stick around and listen to the floor walkers though. They will, they might already be playing underneath me, depending upon how I edit this. Uh, if you're listening to us or watching us on YouTube, there will be a link in the show notes where you can, where you can listen to. We can watch and listen to this song, so please be sure to do that. So with all of that being said, Kyle, I want to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is The Floor Walkers. Mm-hmm.